Welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lala Lori. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm excited for today. Well, you know what? I'm excited for most days. I'm going to say pretty much most days. I'm pretty excited for those days. And, you know, if I find out that I'm not, I kind of let myself sit there for a minute and then I ask a question or two if, if, that's actually creating the future that I like and I do it without judgment. I just ask me myself, honestly, like, is that actually what I'd like to create? Cause what I'm choosing in each moment is actually creating the future uh, that I am creating. And I was not aware of how crazy um, true that was. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So today I wanted to talk about, like it's thankful Thursday and you know what I'm really, 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 really thankful for is that I am choosing every day more and more out of the addiction to trauma drama, the addiction to suffering, the addiction to discouragement, to unhappiness, to guilt, shame, blame, resentment. Yeah, every day I am choosing out of that more and more and more. Um, what I have learned over this last, I would say I started listening to reading Dr. Joe Dispenza's books probably about a year, year and a half ago, maybe even two years now, it could be. And uh, he, he uh, has such fascinating knowledge and it, he's gone beyond what a lot of us learned in school. It's gone into what they call quantum physics. And I, by no means, am a um, professional in all of that information. What I do know is when I take that information and I apply it into my life, I've had crazy awesome things created. And so, you know, as with electricity, when we walk into a room, probably 99.9% .9 of us don't understand what happens when we turn the light switch on, but we're happy to reap the benefits of it. That's kind of where I am sometimes with this stuff with Dr. Joe and the quantum physics. Although I do know that the more I actually understand it, the more I my life actually expands with that information and I find that I apply it at a deeper and deeper level and it then therefore expands and expands at a deeper level. So um, now I can hear you guys asking, addiction to suffering? Like, why would we choose that? Why would I choose that? Addiction to discouragement? Addiction to um, unhappiness? Like when I first started to learn that addiction was more than just what we call the addictions of alcohol, drugs, um, gambling, shopping, like really those are kind of the four ones that I knew of before. I did, you know, and I actually, um, through this modality called Access Consciousness, I actually did quite a few classes with a woman named Marilyn Bradford, who was a, a psychologist who started do who who works with people with addictions and she also started taking classes herself years ago in with access consciousness and one of the things that in access consciousness that you learn is how to ask questions and what she discovered when she started to use the tools of access consciousness use asking questions with her clients patients whatever you want to call them is that the addiction was actually not to the alcohol or the drugs or the shopping itself. It was actually underneath it all was an addiction to wrongness of self. Now, I find that freaking fascinating. I find it incredibly fascinating. And I am so thankful that I learned this information because I'm not going to lie. I kind of had a bit of a, 
you know, it was just little, it wasn't a big one, but there was a bit of an arrogance in my world that I didn't have an addiction. I wasn't addicted to alcohol or drugs or shopping or, you know, or gambling. And as I worked with her, I did quite a few works, um, did quite a few telecalls with her and stuff. And, and she would have resources that would come from her classes and I would type them up for her and share them with the people that took the telecall. What I started to realize is that, holy, holy, if I could swear right now, I'd swear. Well, I could swear, but I've chosen this program at this 10 seconds to not be explicit that I don't, that if I say anything on this show, it's not something I'd want someone who is 12 and under to hear. So I may change the ratings on this show in a later date. So, because I do have fun every once in a while dropping a good F-bomb. Now, what I discovered is I actually was addicted to trauma drama. I was addicted to um, blaming myself, shaming myself, the guilt of myself. And then when I found Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, and I'm actually going to put a link for his book in the show description on Podbean um, for his book, especially the one Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. It's, it's amazing. It's just so informative. It's just got, for me who likes the scientific explanation, it was just incredible the book and I'm actually rereading it again right now because it's just so good but when I real I heard him say on probably a YouTube video and then I've heard it in his books where he said you actually are more addicted to suffering than you are to creating a life and I was like what no but then my gut instinct went holy 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 I could find the truth in it. It was like one of those two by fours to the head. It was like a huge aha that I was actually addicted to the suffering. I was addic addicted to the suffering that the, the discouragement created in my world, that the resentment, that the anger, that the blame, that the shame, I was addicted to that. Now, what is so cool is that uh, with Dr. Joe Dispenza's work is I was able to understand the why I was addicted. And this is where I said before, like when you get into his stuff and you start having the understanding of what he's talking about, it helps you break free of that what we're stuck in. So when I first heard that I got the sense that I was addicted to suffering, I was like, oh my God, so what does one do with this? And like, kind of almost like, why would I choose this? Why would I keep doing this? And then I realize that, that we start choosing something like that, because at the time, it's the best we know how to do. We don't have other information that will actually choose ourselves out of it. So what I, um, what, when I started to listen to his stuff farther, he talks about how we create um, neuro, uh, neural pathways and what happens is, is, so we have an upsetting situation happen, okay? It could be something from a parent. It could be something from a teacher. It could be a sibling. It could be a friend. Like, could be a divorce. Like, whatever it is. You know, our parents d divorced. Our friends, we divorced. Like, whatever it is. We have someone die in our family. And we get into those, what we'd call sort of the heavy emotions. And, um, we get into the stress of it. We get into the contraction of it. And then depending on our environment, and, and that's a mental environment, our emotional environment, our physical environment, the people we're surrounded with, we can then stay in that longer and longer and longer. Now, what happens is, and this is just so fascinating, guys, is that when we get into this and these pathways begin to be built, okay, we, well, actually, that's the whole thing, is the longer we stay in those emotions, those feelings, they actually begin to make pathways within our brain and in our body. And our body starts to recognize that as familiar. And the longer we stay in it, the stronger we build them, the more we build them. Now, this is really basic, okay? Uh, you know, you got to read his stuff to get the technical stuff. I'm giving you the, just the basic lowdown on this. And uh, so I'm not to be held accountable for exactly the, in, the correct wording. <laughs> so anyways, and so we create these and what ends up happening is it's, it's I'm trying to think of a really good example. 
you get used to being negative. You get into whatever that negative emotion is, sadness, blame, shame, regret, discouragement, okay? The longer you sit in it, the more we solidify it. And then the harder or the more awareness and the more presence it then is going to take to get out of it. Okay, it's like starting a new diet. We've got, you know, I'm not a fan of diets. I like to just, you know, have us just eat differently, move more, add into our lives, not restrict. And so uh, um, if we take, sorry, I squirreled myself right out of what I was saying. Um, but if we take you know, that we're going to say, choose to go on a diet or a new eating plan. Okay. And we go to start to do it. Our body literally is so used to the old way of being that it sees that change, even though that change is going to be good and create more in your life. It goes alert, 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 change is happening, change is happening. And then the body, because it's so used to being this heavy, negative, suffering and trained way will actually sabotage your the stuff that you want to choose to create greater. And what you need to do is be so present with it. And you need to, like training a horse that has just been running wild for a while, you need to go stay, 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 stay with it. And then you allow yourself to choose forward. Now, this is a really great place where people can use different kind of modalities to assist you if you have some. Like sometimes just the awareness of it and staying present with it can change it. And sometimes there's other things like, you know, um, EFT, emotional freedom tapping. You could use Reiki. You could use massage. It could be a chiropractor. You know, um, there are so many different cool um, modalities out there that you can use to help you shift yourself out of this. Um, it's, it's almost like it shifts and moves up and shakes up the energy in your body and gets it unstuck from where you've solidified yourself. Now, and then as you start to move forward, you could, you then have the possibility of creating yourself a different future. And this is where his book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, that's where the title comes from, is because you've gotten used to being yourself as a person who, say, eats poorly, as someone who's sad, as someone who's miserable, as someone who's used to blaming themselves. And you get so used to that, that you need to actually get beyond that in order to create a different future. Like we've been told we need to understand this negativity. We need to figure it out. We need to sit in it longer and you can, and you need to also see what that actually creates. And what I've discovered, and I've talked on a few of my shows, how I've been choosing meditation. So this meditation I've been choosing since September, 2018, it's been about six months now where I really, really, really sit in it. And I'm allowing myself to choose beyond and get into the future I desire to create. So that may be like I referred to the energetic priorities that I've talked about on previous shows of vibrancy, of wealthy, of playful. Now, one of the things that I was, that it's a good example of that is tomorrow, um, actually by the time this show's airs, airs will be coming home, but we're going to be leaving for Mexico. And I am already imagining myself coming home from Mexico, just thinking that was the best trip I've ever had. It was so much fun. Uh, everything we did, it just created more. I had a great time with my hubby and the people we met or didn't meet, like however that goes, the things we choose to do. I just feel so incredibly satisfied and grateful for how this trip was and you got to think about it as though it's now as though it's now as though it's now and it's like when you get in the energy like you already have it the universe then brings it to you it creates the how it figures out the why and it just lands in your lap and then you just got to say yes to it so i am having more and more of that so um i am Oh, I just wondering here, you know what, we are already almost at the 15 minutes. And so I'm going to say goodbye for today. And I hope that gave you guys something to, you know, really chew on and and look at, you know, is there a place in your life where you've actually been addicted to blame or sadness or whatever? And, or 
play, stuck in the addiction to the wrongness of yourself. Oh, that was a good one. I had that one too. Let me know people. I had that one too. And um, there's just no room for that in my life anymore. And I just want to so inspire you, encourage you to play with this and uh, check her, check out Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. And, um, you know, I'm getting that in the future here, pretty near future, I want to start like doing just some fun group work with people playing with this kind of concepts ourselves, like, you know, creating and, oh, yes, gosh, I could talk about this forever, you guys, save for another show, take care, have an amazing day, people, thank you so much for listening, and big hugs to you.